failure is like a rupture, splitting from what was agreed and planned. It is not something wanted. It alters the position of everybody involved. But who is entitled to address the issue? And how? One thing is for sure. Addressing failure creates additional commotion. Dealing with heat and pressure may help to overcome crisis, but it takes a bit more to recognise the diamond within apparent chaos. And how do you become partners within a failure turning brilliant? I can recall one <laughs> failure in a partnership where it was just recently, where I felt that the, the partner I worked with could not understand my frustration. Um, and there, my emotions were very high in a way that I really also started to cry <laughs> when I talked with the partner because I, I could not find another way to communicate my frustration. And their emotions played a very strong role because then the other person felt very offended by me <laughs> being uh, sad. And then we sorted it out in a very deep conversation, having a third person on board like a counsellor, and then we could clear and find a common language again, which was then more was helpful to clean, <laughs> to clear up the emotions that were very unhappy at that point. The, the intention, when it is genuinely coming from what we would call the heart, or the, um, the wish of benevolence. It's really the loving kindness. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a helpful part of it. It's not everything, because we also need to have skillful means. You know, innovation always comes from challenges. So new ideas come from the failures as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what role did emotions play? Were there any emotions coming into play? because of the instances of feeling we are not on the right track, we need to get back. Yeah, I think this is common. Every time when you think uh, <clears throat> you have a program or a project and you see you're not really reaching the point, as a human being you will still start feeling somehow unsecured. So what you do, you just, uh, since you work as a team, that team or that collectiveness uh, makes some corrections as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are no brilliant failures unless you learn from those failures and it needs a lot of discussion. It's not like a, a ripe apple falling from the tree. It's a process of making a brilliant failure out of a failure. It's the learning process. The one biggest factor is trust. Okay, even for failure also. I think, you know, there, you know, then when there is failure, I mean, I think that uh, what I've said is, you know, in a project, I think, you know, the way I've worked is, is really not about that it's a straight cut failure. It's about, you know, at different moments, what are the challenges that we face and how do we face those challenges in order to learn and then to navigate the process. I think that's what it is. For us in the global south, the kind of environment that we work in may be a bit difficult. And so uh, with this kind of challenges, you need a leader that is able to listen. You can look at academic records, you can look at former projects. That's already something, but the truth is in the, in the eating. If you really work together, if you have to, to do something, then you see whether uh, whether you are on the same page or not. From my experience, at the start, I really tried, and I think that was also not so good as a strategy, to work on the same level with everyone, like very horizontal relationships with everyone. And that didn't work because there were really people who cheated and people who did not respond, who did not do the work, and then um, sometimes I really, or I, I would say, I really had to learn in this project to be like unforgiving and hard and harsh and yeah, and to threaten and lo a lot of nasty things that was really necessary sometimes because the horizontal work, it works with some people, but it, it, with others, it really doesn't. 
sometimes strong leadership alone might not work very well. Sometimes communication alone might not work. And some people are highly, highly un uncooperative. Mm -hmm. In that case, you, you might become very angry, very emotional. But that doesn't go to work. You, you must control yourself because it's your responsibility, it's your job to carry out the activities. The, the way I was exchanging with my partner in the Philippines, very open-minded and, and, uh, and, and trying to, to have some jokes, things like that, it was part of a common culture. Eh, nosotros somos muy, muy cumplidos, por ejemplo, en materia de, de, materia de fechas, en materia formal. ¿no? Por mismo hecho de que yo he estudiado en Suiza, digamos, y me dicen, presente un reporte el 10 de enero, presente el reporte el 10 de enero. Eso no ha no ocurrido con los otros socios del proyecto. People are at their best if they're independent and if they can determine what they want to do within a project, if they can develop ownership in a research project. Um, which might be another also human component, which is this independence or autonomy, um, innovation, sort of trying to come up with their own ideas and not just wait until someone from the north or someone in a hierarchically higher position tells them this is what you have to do, one, two, three, four. And I don't think we've achieved that with all the partners we had in our project, but with some we have, and, and that's just where the results were brilliant. <laughs> Oh, that's what I would, you know, what I would like to see, what I had wanted to see maybe a bit more. And maybe we should have been more clear about also this kind of expectation. When it comes to selecting partners for your R4D projects, how do you select partners? What is your selecting strategy? Um, what does this mean? Uh, because here in Nepal, I am not selecting part, uh, partners. If you are asking about the, how this um, Swiss partner select uh, the partners yes. at that time, yeah. um, I realize working with this type of the collaboration project for several years, almost seven, 15 years now, um, that they select the partner who was relatively weak. They select the partner. Uh, who don't make the uh, counter argument with them, who uh, don't make the um, critical question to them, and those who say yes, they um, uh, prefer that. For example, we realized that in one country, our, our partners were sitting almost in the same building, like here, but they waited for a workshop to do when one of us was there and called for the workshop, though they came. But it was impossible to, uh, to call them for a workshop on their own or on coordination or on cooperation on their own. There were so much different hierarchies. For example, one was already a professor, the other one not. They wrote letters, dear professor, though the other one had to write, dear doctor. And, uh, you know, so many unresolved things you, you don't understand. And that makes it sometimes difficult for the partners in the same country to cooperate. Y yo quiero dar un mensaje, ¿no? A todos que que las mujeres, hombres tenemos todas las posibilidades lo, de lograr los éxitos que uno planifica. Pero tiene siempre tiene que ver en cuenta eh, que en la Laimara no solo tiene que verse de manera personal ese éxito, sino también valorar a lo que es origen, su comunidad su familia o su organización. De esta manera yo creo que vamos a realizar o lograr resultados. Muchas gracias. Un jallaya para todos.